one day, uh, and it was in India again, a lady was walking up the road toward us and I was standing outside a little village church building and she was carrying this little baby and I knew she was going to come to me. Beside me was the pastor that arranges my meetings and he's also my interpreter and the pastor of this little church was standing beside him. The woman came straight to me and dropped the little baby in my arms. And then she's talking to them because I don't understand their language. And the pastor is saying to me, this baby is five days old. Just five days. But this baby for three days has not suckled. It hasn't had any food, water, or anything. It hasn't opened its eyes. It hasn't moved a muscle. It hasn't smiled or cried or done anything. And I'm nursing this little baby. And people say to me, was it dead? I say, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. And it wasn't my business anyway. So what do I do? Am I going to cast the demons out of the baby? Or am I going to uh, speak you know, healing to the baby? No, 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 no. I'm the body. Father is the one that's going to tell me what to do. So immediately I say, Father, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to hold that little baby just close to your chest. Which I did. I never said a word. I never did anything except hold that little baby close to my chest. I knew Christ was there in here. And I knew that that Christ could energize the spirit in that little baby. <coughs> just like when Mary, remember when Mary was pregnant and goes to see Elizabeth? And the, the babe in Elizabeth's womb leapt in the presence of the king. And he was still a fetus in her womb. Think what he can do when he got out of that womb. Just think about it. The presence of God. When you walk up to somebody, I want to tell you, there is a spiritual exchange. You don't have to... the baby back to the mother like that. She took the baby, just turned around and went off home. And i have done what I need to do. You say, well, was the baby healed? I don't know. That wasn't my job. My job wasn't to heal the baby. My job was to do what he told me. Hold the baby against your chest. And I did. See? The father says, well done. You're, good. You're a faithful servant. Next morning, of course, the woman came back to the pastor and said, would you say thank you to that man that healed my baby last night? Because he didn't understand any more than she did. I didn't heal the baby. But she said she went home, and the baby went to the, baby went to the breast and began to suckle, opened its eyes and did everything that a baby's supposed to do. i just tell you that story, uh, that, that experience that I had, just to help you to understand, we are the body. That's all. God never intended me to do a miracle. Never. Except in my true identity as the Christ. But you see, it's the Christ that did the miracle. It wasn't me. So, you see, there are many preachers, particularly Pentecostal preachers, you know, they're like, there's another scalp, you know, there's another star I put on my belt because there's another person that I've raised from the dead or whatever you want to call it, you know. And they run around and tell everybody, yeah, I can, I can heal. I'm a healer. Yeah. I'm not a healer. But I know that God can do anything he wants to do. So you see, Jesus was the body. That's all. He was the body. If the Father said, I want you to touch that leper, well, then Jesus put out his hand. It was his hand that did it. He touched the leper and did what God said, and the leper was healed. But Jesus didn't do that. That was the Father in him. Because he said, I and my Father, we are one. We work together. Come on, this is true Christianity. This is you and God being a laborer together with him. I want this to change your life. If I said nothing else tonight, 
I would like to think that this would transform your whole experience. Because you've been living, you're like, God's up there, you're down here, fighting away at everything that's trying to pull you down, while he's trying to pull you up, and you're getting longer and longer as he's pulling up, and you've been pulled down. And, and we think that's the Christian life. No, 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 no. We are laborers together with God. Everything you do, you're a laborer together with God. You raised many of you people, you, you've already raised a family. How did you do that? You did that on your own. Oh, God, help you. I did. Well, the first part of their life, uh, I didn't understand what I'm sharing with you. But later I did, and that changed. Fortunately, I have a beautiful family. It's, it's uh, cohesive. I mean, we have no fighting in our family. Uh, they all are great mates together and uh, we have a wonderful time. Therefore, I can go away for three and a half, four months, leave my wife. Why? Because my family look after her. And she goes and lives with this one and then that one. And they argue, you know, she stays with this one for a week and she got to stay with this one for a week. Hmm. You know? <coughs> so it is. We're laborers together with God. So now you see it's a different it's a different thing altogether, isn't it? But I didn't tell you the last thing about John 10, John 14, verse 10. First, you're in the Father. Secondly, the Father's in you. He said, the words that I speak are not my words. He said, these are the words of my Father. Because the words of my Father are spirit and life. The words of Des Walden just go out into the breeze. But, you see, this is what I had to learn in ministry. <coughs> Tonight, you may not understand, but I'm telling you what Father is saying to you. Don't ask me how to do it, because I can't tell you. All I know is that Father in me just takes me through the Word, says, this is what I want you to say. And then the next scripture comes into my mind. Yes, I want you to use that, and so on. So, it's not Des Wilder. It's the Father that you're hearing speaking to you. And would to God that all of us could understand and function that way. But preachers, well, they did exactly what I did for the first 40 years of my life. I was a missionary, I was a pastor. What did I do? Sunday morning I'd get in the vestry there and I would say, Oh Lord, anoint me. Lord, pour the anointing oil on me. Lord, give me power. Give me authority. Lord, give me the word. Come on. Lord, give me something. You know, this is what I used to do. And then I'd go out and, and preach. But I'd already prepared the sermon. You know, I had my notes <laughs> and the beginning and the end and the whole thing. Lord, but bless it, will you? Just for, because I did this for you, you know. <laughs> when you come down and preach, you know, for me. Well, that's what I used to say, too. And then I found out that's what he wanted to do all along. 